meeting of the um, Council's policy and performance board meeting. Um, can I start with apologies for absence? I've given three Jeanette Williamson, Brian Kenny, and Phil Brymore. And we've got Ron Abbey and Rob Gregson who are deputising there. Are there any other apologies or deputies that we've got full house? No? Good. Um, can I ask, can I draw your attention to item two on the agenda, which is declarations of interest? And does anybody have a declaration of interest on any of the agenda items that we've got before us this evening? Okay. I can ask you all to confirm to me that you're not subject to party work for this meeting. Yeah. Okay, minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 23rd of June. Um, would you like to look at those? That's item three on the agenda. If you'd like to have a look at those. Those of you who were at the meeting, um, could you confirm that they're an accurate record of that meeting? Okay, the next item on the agenda, before we move to it, it's a notice of motion that was referred to this committee from full council. Um, before we actually move to deal with that, I would think it would be a good idea if we just, I know there are guidelines which relate to dealing with notice of motion, there isn't actually um, an instruction. So I think it would be a good idea if we agreed a format for this evening. And if you're agreeable, my suggestion is that we invite the mover and the seconder to come forward and um, make the points that they want to make to support their notice of motion. Um, I'm not going to time limit them. I don't think that that's appropriate in this forum, but if I think you're going on for a long, long time, um, I might suggest that you're boring us slightly. Um, so I would ask you to keep a reasonable length of time. Um, at that point, after that, I'll ask them to withdraw to the body of the hall and the committee will debate the notice of motion. Hopefully we will reach a conclusion. I have been asked, and I, I think it's reasonable to agree, that um, one of the movers or the seconder um, would be allowed just two minutes um, to respond to some of the points that have come up in the debate. And I think that's a fair um, thing to do, and I will, I will with the committee's agreement to agree to that. So can we agree that this is the way of, of dealing with this tonight? Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Um, okay, then can you invite I understand that Councillor Green hasn't been able to make this meeting tonight. Um, and if that is the case, um, is Councillor Fraser, are you ready to come forward and, and make your points? I notice there's no microphone there. Would you be more comfortable using the microphone at the end of that table? Yeah, I think we might need more. Would you like to say this? If you could just take it to the end of the table rather than sit in there in the horseshoe.
The size of the council might be decreasing, but members may argue that their caseload is not. I would therefore suggest that as well as reducing the number of councillors, local elections take place every four years when members' workload would be distributed differently and would cut costs further. Let's not forget the public voters into office to represent them. When I was first elected, I knew I would be attending council meetings and helping those residents who ask for assistance. Any other responsibilities we take on are by choice. For example, the number of leaflets delivered, the amount of canvassing we do, whether or not we accept the responsibility of chairing the committee, whether we accept a place on the cabinet. And councillors who accept these positions, I may add, receive remuneration for it. Either way, that is our choice and should not be a mitigating factor. There's a huge difference in how proactive each councillor is or isn't. I would like to confirm my agreement with the LGA and suggest that one councillor should represent a distinct area. That way, at election time, we can be judged by the public on our performance and be held to account, which is true democracy and what the public want. If we reduce the number of councillors from 66 to 44, we will have two in each ward, with each councillor having their own distinct patch. Our neighbours in Nosley, part of the combined authority, has already taken the steps to reduce the number of councillors. They've gone from 63 to 45, and Nosley believe the reduction in numbers will save 250,000 as part of their plans to save 16 million over the next two years very similar to savings which can be made in rural. I will quote the Labour leader councillor of No leader I will quote the Labour Council leader of Nosley, Andy Moorhead, who said, It was a tough decision, but the right one. Quite simply, it means that us as councillors will have to work that bit harder. We're asking our employers to do exactly the same. I think it's fair that we do the same. Just for clarification, the Local Government Boundary Commission would carry out an eight-week consultation and publish the results and its recommendations. I would suggest that rather than request a timetable for, a, for an inquiry through Wirral and thereby saving money, we instruct the Chief Executive to write to the Boundary Commission requesting they carry out a consultation with the people of Wirral as soon as possible. Rather than the Council consult consulting, in the interest of openness and transparent, transparency, I believe that the Boundary Commission should do this work. Thank you. I hope that you weren't too bored. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Would you like to move back into the yeah. other problem? Yeah. Right, so I'm going to open this up for debate now, for discussion. Yes, Ron. And I'll, I'll, anybody want to speak in the case? I'm just I'd like to point out a couple of things that I think we to be factored in. That Councillor Fraser quoted two and a half thousand people who left the authority over the last couple of years. In one year alone, 1150 people left the Tory administration. So you, know, you can't quote like for like figures. Same as quoting Mosley. You can't, can't quote like for like with Mosley. Mosley's a, Mosley's a third of the size of this authority. And each council representing an on average about 2,000, 2,500 people. Our average you can't across Wigan is about 11,000. You can't quote like the line, when you're quoting from an upfront, you have to have a companion authority, and that's what we need to be looking at. What's a, an authority of our similar side? There's the duties that we do, and how do we go for it? That's probably a piece of work that a task of British people should do, or, or a working party going forward as part of that process, so you get all the evidence in place. I am aware of the, the due of the parliamentary boundary review. And that should, that should also become first, because that would, in, would intimate what is within the constituency boundaries, as opposed to what, what is now might not be there in the future. Okay, thank you very much, John. Um, Wendy, did you want to speak to Kevin? Sorry? Yeah, Wendy, did you want to say a second? Mike? And then Walter? Yes, I, I thought I thought for a few months now that we should be looking at this, and I said so to the leader. I went to the leader of the council, Phil Davis. I went to Phil a couple of months ago about it because I was concerned with all the reasons that have been given, and, and 
Phil said to me, I, and this is to quote Phil, there's nothing off the table. We will be looking at this. Now, you might disagree and say we should have acted faster. Well, that's fine. But what we're doing is, there's a, a parliamentary, I'll bring the cover notes down here. There is due to be a review of the parliamentary boundaries in the very near future. And it's almost certain that a review of the local authority boundaries will follow. I think we all accept that. We all accept that. Um, to do one now and to preempt that, which would cost extra money, I think would be preemptive and, um, and not really conducive with what we're trying to do. I think it would be wrong, I'm sorry if I'm going on with you. I think it would be wholly wrong if we just stuck our finger on our put our hand up there and said reduce the council by a third. Some wards, in deprived wards, they might have a lot more casework to do than say I do. And I know I, I work seven days a week at this job because that's the way I think it should be done. And it is up to, to individual councillors how much or how little they do. And I think that will reflect in the ballot box because there's people who you can't fool and that's the electorate out there. So I think it would be would be best, although I agree that we should look at it, I really do. Um, is 33% too much? We discovered when Ron said about the 1100 that went, it was just a queue to get out the door. And then we discovered that there was um, departments which had virtually nobody in them. So it's a, it is a big step, this, and I can see why we, we do need to look at it. And maybe implement it, let's let's wait and see. But it is a big step, a very big step, certainly for our group. Um, so we need to do it properly. Thanks, Thanks Chair. Thank you. Um, I've got, I'm, in the interest of, of balance, I've got Wendy and Tom on this side, I've got a few more people, I've got Walter, Rob, and Jerry. So, Wendy, would you like to go next? Bill Gilchrist as well. Okay. Wendy first, and then Walter. Thank you, Chair. Um, it seems like a good idea to let people who have experience across the country for looking at this matter. I know the Government Boundary Commission do some looking. And one of the questions that the council could then be asking them was around the numbers of people that we represent. Of course, our board is 11,500, but there are three members covering it. And I'm sure I'll, um, you would all be aware that members of the public find three members per board quite confusing. And they say to me after an election, oh, so you, you've stopped now. Well, no, I'm still here. <laughs> it, it, it's confusing. It's, it is not transparent to just have one person representing. So I think there's a great deal of virtue in having people who do know the system and know the country as a whole to look at this. I'm going to say. Tom? Oh, sorry, I'm back to watch up. Sorry. Yes, Tom. Now I'll come back to you, Walter. Thank you, Chair. It's a good day. Thanks for that. Which is the point that uh, um, 
supporters of this motion have made. And that would really be very good, but you still need the same number of councillors virtually that we've got uh, now. Um, I don't know where uh, most councillors must be aware. The harder you work, the more cases you get. And, uh, so, so do nothing, don't be surprised if you don't get anything uh, from the public. But if you're putting out regular newsletters, you're holding weekly surgeries, um, your week, your workload goes up tremendously. Um, there are other things, don't forget, we all represent um, ourselves, the council, on different organisations. Now, we have um, a daycare centre, which I normally attend. Jerry normally can't make that on a, a Thursday morning, but I slip out from work. Uh, the last two occasions, for one reason or another, I've not been able to make it. But my colleague, Christina, has covered. Um, um, so, so there's other things, and representations at um, the residents' associations, and public meetings, and meetings with the parks, uh, friendly societies, and all the rest of it. So there's a whole lot of work going on. I, I, I don't know whether, maybe the uh, supporters of this motion don't do that, and they don't have any experience of it, I don't know. But all I can say is that, um, I, I couldn't see uh, taking on more work. I think um, it would be ridiculous. You know? I mean, I already uh, followed it out the other Friday night to myself. Uh, most Friday nights are already booked off. Uh, I'm looking to really go on holiday. So I, I certainly don't find any merit in this. And uh, certainly we ought to wait and see what the outcome of the boundaries review is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry and Christina in that order, if that's okay, and Stephen. Okay. So, Rob. Um, thank you, Chair. To begin with, I'd like to say that um, the workload that councillors do these days is not up to local councillors anymore. We've become a very responsive group to the workload that's been imposed on us by the residents out there. And there's a reason for that, a very simple reason. This government is making savage cuts that are affecting people. And they're getting in touch with the local councillors at a rate today that far exceeds anything we've known before. This is my first term and I was told right at the very start that being a councillor now is not what it was 10, 15 years ago. The workloads have completely increased. When Councillor Fraser said that we take extra duties on, like we've put them putting out in um, political, whatever, uh, that's not a councillor's duty. That's something that we do as political party members, and it's not included here. So we do have a choice in that, but nobody is sitting here and griping about a councillor's record because of what they've given out as a party member. That's not included in, in this whatsoever. It was a wrong point. Um, councillors take up positions where they're chairing various committees, well, we have to have um, these committees, we have to have our, um, what's it, it's a cabinet, there's a statutory obligation there, so even by reducing the number, those committees would still exist and councils would be, would be, would be forced to put on them, so really, if this is financially led and it's designed to make it save them, I think Time would be best spent writing to your own party and government and explaining to them the damage that they're doing to our region on the road through our posterity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Phil, Phil Christ. I get this terrible feeling that I've been around so long that when I refer to things that happened in the past, people go to sleep straight away. But I want to go back 40 years. When I was Young, which is a long time ago, I used to go to Edmonton Council meetings. Were you ever? When I went to Edmonton Council meetings, I was a young, young, happy young person visiting the Edmonton Library on my bicycle, collecting records from the Lackwood Library, and going into the old Mayor Hall and watching them upstairs. And I think we've forgotten, but in 1973, there were 30 councillors in Barrington. 
and there were 10 aldermen and there were four county councillors. So the 30, the 40 odd have become 12 if we take the same area. So we've been through this and I'm opposed to simplistic solutions. I'm, I'm trying not to be rude, but something on the back of an envelope solution is not what I see needs us doing. When Mosley undertook its review, the Boundary Commission came in and did a preliminary war report in August 2014, and it took till June 2015 to produce proposals. And when I look at the Mosley figures, and they looked at population in Mosley, because this is the example that was chosen, and they looked at the year 2020, which seems to be the buzz thing nowadays, but they looked for 2020, and they came out with the highest the number of, highest number of electors per councillor will be in Sherryfield Ward in Mosley in 2020 is 2,839. That would be the highest number and the lowest would be 2,493. So the Boundary Commission to me don't seem to have this figure that's been collected by the Conservatives as some great rationale but then I looked at where else has the Boundary Commission been looking at locally? And the point was made about looking at an authority of similar size or similar duties. So the most recent study was in Warrington. And in Warrington, the Boundary Commission said, sorry, um, you want to go from 57 to 58. Well, there were objections from my colleagues in the Liberal Democrats going from 57 to 58. But the Boundary Commission said, you should be 58. And they have eight, proposed eight wards with two councillors and 14 wards with three councillors. And if you look at the Noah Mosley Warrington sums, the highest number of electors per councillor is to be 3,212, and the lowest 2,620. Uh, so the figures that we look at here, with the job that has been ably described by Councillor Gregson and alluded to by other members, I'm not saying we're in a different ball game, but we are in a different, almost parallel universe to this one with you know, the yeah, small balls yeah, and so on. Yeah, yeah. We have a problem, which is, is there a basic attack on local democracy? I would say there has been, there is. Are we moving to a new system with substantial change? It looks as though we are. So who is going, where are these people going to come from? keep an eye on the new Merseyside Mayor, if one should be chosen for the city region. Will there be an assembly of councillors with that specific job keeping an eye on them? I have enough trouble keeping an eye on what goes on here, I don't make any political points. But we also were told three years ago that we were moving to a system of constituency committees. And the work of councillors was not just in this August pile, but it was to be out in the communities working with residents, working with community groups, restoring the role of councillor to what it was 40 years ago. And that's my starting point. What is the job we're supposed to be doing? What is the ideal way to do the job? Or what is the most effective way of organising our democracy? And that is done by thought, not snatching a figure that another council over water has been working on for some time yeah. and suddenly thinking you translate it to here. Because they have no way to go about it. Thank you. Um, I've got three more speakers. Well, I think that that's very yes. comprehensive. I've got Jerry, and if you could keep it quite brief, yeah. I'm you know, conscious so of time. Good. Christina, and then Steve Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Then I mean, okay. yeah. I mean, this is a much more complex issue, you know, that is indicated by the notice of motion and deserves more than sort of, you know, examination. It's, it's not about the number of councils only, but about proper democratic representation for all residents. Uh, I mean, from a workload point of view, I mean, uh, all, all I can say is, I mean, we've had all these uh, mass reductions in, um, in, in council staff, and to such an extent that I had an issue, for instance, in my work with Borough Solicitors Department 14 years ago, and there was not one member of staff that were there to actually witness that, that issue 14 years ago. They'd all gone. I was the only person who could witness that, that issue. That's how much you know uh, sets up how many uh, you know, savage cuts that, that we've had over, over time. 
And um, I mean, yeah, I mean, Phil's is right, you know, community counselling, you know, that there's more, I, I find actually the workload has uh, increased, and part of, part of the reason for that is the mass reduction in council staff. So our workload has actually increased because of that. And as you say, you mentioned about the penalty situation, that's a third less of the constituents, the average constituents than we've got here. And uh, the community engagement is what is our, you know, main, you know, importance uh, uh, project going forward is to engage the communities more and more. And, uh, you know, to, to do that, you know, we, are we going to have a situation where we have less councillors? And as you say, but the workload is increasing, you know, threefold, fourfold. Uh, so we need to examine the decision. Okay. Um, Steve, what's going on? I'll take Christina finally, and then I'll sum up. Thanks, Chair. Um, I, I feel quite a few of us have got away from the point here, um, particularly Ron Michael and Walter, who appear to be arguing against the actual reduction of, of councillors on, on the authority. This motion is asking, the two main things I've picked out from it is consulting with the public over this issue and to invite the Boundary Commission to look at it. We're not here to decide whether it's right or wrong. That the, the motion is asking that this be done. Um, and as Jeffy's just, just said, he, he feels that it, it needs greater investigation, and that's what I feel we should be asking for. Uh, just on a point of clarity, um, the notice of motion does say ask the boundary commission to consult on the reduction. So there's a, a, a premise there to be consulted on. It's not come in and look, it is consult on. Reduction in the number of councillors. So it is, yeah, on that part, on the last, final paragraph, it says to invite the boundary commission to meet with representation. Okay, nice. um, Christina, would you like to round up? No, no, I'll round up. I have a lot of sympathy with. Can you put your mic? Sorry, sorry. I have a lot of sympathy with some of the things that have been said because obviously we are in a position where we're cutting, but we haven't cut ourselves. I have to say, very unpopularly to everybody probably. There's two ways of looking at it though, aren't there? We could all take a third less money and then we could make a reduction. But I, I do feel whilst it does need to be looked at and definitely needs to be looked at, um, we have to, we can't dismiss the fact of the Boundary Commission. I was looking, thinking before, Phil and I are probably the only two who have ever been in the split constituency when we were in Bellington and Ellesmere Board. And we do know that it throws up a lot of problems and it would be sensible to get that out of the way and that decided on, on what is going through and then look at it. And as far as I remember from the numerous um, boundary commission inquiries we've had, um, they, don't, they tend to do one at a time for those reasons. Um, we don't know whether they're going to resurrect the plan from before, we don't know if it's going to be a new one. But it certainly looks as if it's going to be cross uh, local authority constituency boundaries. And I would suggest that we, we wait and see what those are um, before we look at anything. Let, let, and let, ask them for that advice as well. And I'm also slightly concerned with something that you said about if you have two, they have distinct areas. Again, I think that might have suited the area where it was done. And I know in our ward, there's a time thing as well, because I tend to be around at lunchtime. So I tend to get a lot of phone calls from the oldies who don't use mobiles, who phone my house phone at lunchtime, when the other two guys are away on, at work. It works very well for us. We, we tend to work as a team. I'm not quite sure with what Wendy meant, because I think everybody knows us. I don't know what they call us, but everybody knows us. Um, and um, I think everybody knows which one of us is coming up each time. There's never any doubt. But my, my thoughts are that, yes, we look at this in all fairness and fairness to everybody, but we really need to do it after the boundary commission. Okay, thanks very much. Um, can I now invite Councillor Fraser to come back and you have two minutes if you don't mind to respond to any points that you heard. I would prefer you not to introduce new points in the discussion.
Um, it's not automatic that the local government boundary will change with time just because of one election or less. Um, Walter talked about being hard working and proactive um, and how difficult it would be uh, in a smaller area. Well, perhaps then you would realise what it's like for staff who are having to reduce and they're having to take on more. And you, you did go on to say that um, perhaps um, Councillor Green and I uh, don't know what that's like uh, because of the amount of work that you do. Uh, but then maybe we're younger, so we're able to deal with it at a quicker pace. Um, I was quite disappointed if not. Well, one can't deserve it, can't we? No, it doesn't actually. It needs to control what you're saying. Please feel free to report to standards if you don't like that. I think we won't go any further on that. Um, I was mind. quite disappointed, Rob, um, with what you said because you're quite political, and I, I don't believe that what I said um, when I spoke was at all political in any way. Um, if this is your first term, you have no experience of, of other boards or what it's been like beforehand, so I don't really think you can comment on um, the... the Councillor Fraser, Councillor Fraser, can I just um, ask you one thing? Can you please address the points that were made rather than the individuals who made yeah, well, it's not a And then I will give you one more minute. We're talking about... Um, Phil goes backwards and so forwards. One thing I'd like to point out when you talk about wards um, being, um, being two or three thousand in other areas, um, my doctor um, has two thousand patients um, and he manages, I managed to get an appointment that morning when I ring up. So if you compare it to a doctor who I'm sure has worked loads is far bigger than ours, um, I, I can see what the problem is with the issue. Six thousand. Um, okay. I think we're going to have to ask Fraser. Just two minutes is up. Just deserve more consideration. I think Steve made the point. This whole thing is to look at it. I do think we need a reduction. Too many of us have reduced the staff. Uh, we need to reduce the number. Thank you very much. And I'm going to come up now. Um, first thing I would point out like to make is that good scrutiny, and I do believe that this council is getting better at scrutiny all the time, but it of course does depend on those being involved not be treated into party political focus. And the wording of this, I'm afraid, um, is a reflection of both of the context in which it was proposed, but it does make it more difficult to, for us to achieve that good scrutiny. However, we'll try to do our job properly and stripping away the rhetoric of the notice of motion, there is a serious uh, point here which needs to um, be looked at and how good representation of people should be working and that's the concern of us tonight, of ourselves tonight. Uh, we've had a number of points made tonight by people who obviously do um, think there's some merit in this notice of motion. First of all, obviously the impact that reductions in budget have had on staffing, um, which we are all painfully aware of. Um, the need to look at the cost of democracy in the context of, of the budgetary pressures. Um, whether or not having three councillors is confusing for people, and feeling that the boundary commission are the best people to do those jobs. And I think that summarises the points that came forward in the debate on this side. Other points that were made is that comparisons with uh, Borough of Nosy are not really relevant because of the size of the walls there. Um, that the parliamentary boundary uh, changes will more than likely produce changes in the local authority boundaries, and is the timing right? to um, look at our boundary is uh, I understand that the parliamentary proposals will reduce the number of MPs by 10%. This notice of motion asks for 33% reduction in councillors, um, but there's no rationale or business case put forward for that. Um, we've got data, um, and I was on the working party, that looked at the impact of um, individual electoral registration, where it was acknowledged that there would be a, a drop-off rate of people registering to vote, um, and that would be particularly felt in the more deprived wards. Um, I think the Conservative estimate around a drop-off was 8% in most wards, but it would likely to go up to a lot higher than that in the more deprived wards. Um, so are the Boundary Commission, who simply look at numbers, the best people to carry out a review? That's something we need to consider. Um, there's a, an, 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 an assertion that we've got too many councillors, um, but we have never had a job evaluation done, and I am more than happy for somebody to come and look at the number of hours that I put in, which well exceeds full-time working. Um, so I would volunteer willingly for that to be done. Um, we've never really looked at whether each ward's workload is the same. 
where there's some wards, as we've heard, I didn't know that there were examples across the country where some wards have got one councillor or two councillors, and other wards that have got higher workload have got higher numbers. So that's something else that could be considered, and I don't think the boundary commission would be the people who would do that. From my own observation as chair of two of these policy and performance committees, and I'm very grateful always for the input of all the members of the committee, but when I look for volunteers to undertake um, extra duties, task and finish work, which are crucial to the running of the council and have contributed greatly to uh, refining policy in, in certain areas, I'm not inundated with volunteers. That su suggests to me that councillors' workloads are actually um, heavy and that they don't always have the time to participate in that sort of work. So, my feeling, having listened to the arguments put back and forwards, is that this is a much more complex issue than the notice of motion really gives us to understand. And um, I'm going to propose the following recommendation and see, um, I'll put it to a vote then. Um, Coordinating Committee thanks the Mayor for referring the notice of motion and regrets there's been a delay in bringing it to committee. I'm not going to deal with that now. Though upset that this was due to a number of circumstances which were not in our control. The committee feels that the factors to be considered when determining what constitutes proper, fair representation of world population go beyond simply numbers, and so we propose that we establish a task and finish panel of this committee to undertake a more in-depth examination of the issues, and that this be added to the committee work programme. Can I have all those in favour of that, please? Do you want to move an amendment? Very long, very long yes? Uh, can I have a second for my notice of motion? Yeah, my recommendation, yes, Tom. Have you got it written down? Thanks, Chair. Okay, so please. Um, yeah, um, so forgive, forgive the sloppy wording, but I'd like to propose that we take a sentiment that this motion was meant, and that we invite the Boundary Commission to have a local room to review on the number of councillors, and we call back to the council in the course of recommendation. Okay, so that's a separate recommendation from mine. So I'll put mine to the vote first. It's all those in favour, please show. Uh, really important because 
this plan is for the first time about outcomes, uh, outcomes for the community. It's not about services. Um, we know, uh, and you know it more, more, than, more than I do, uh, around uh, what uh, residents want, where and how and by whom that services are delivered. Uh, matter the difference of residents, uh, it is in fact it's informed that we achieve what they want uh, throughout their life. Uh, so the achievements of outcomes is the more important duty that we have uh, as councillors and officers. You and we are community leaders, uh, so it's really important that as part of that plan that we have a community leadership role throughout this. Uh, and clearly in terms of working with our partners in collaborative solutions to the very tricky situations we have is clearly important. So it being a real plan, it, it, it is vital to, to, our, to our success. Um, we know, don't we, that you know, through, through succession of, uh, of discussions, whether that be throughout our social care in terms of direct payments or, or, or self-improvement, that people in the community want to be self-sufficient, that nothing should be more important to them through, through jobs, through, through good housing, uh, through, through their, their opportunities that they have through good education. Um, they want to be independent and they want to live their own lives freely uh, and freely from, from input from local councils, only being there when, when, when necessary. And we'll support this. We'll support this through empowerment, uh, we'll support it through unlocking the potential of our communities, and more importantly, unlocking the potential of the people who live in our communities. All of this, of course, does come with the backdrop of, 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 of the resources that are available. Uh, our budget will be reduced to around £201 million pounds, uh, in net terms uh, by 2020, and that's down between from £30 million, uh, which is just five years ago. This means that we're going to be making some choices, that will be the right choices to make, the prioritisation of those resources, uh, and looking for alternative solutions is quite critical for the delivery of this plan. Gerald, if I may, I'll just quickly go through some of the, the, the remainder slide, but I think the most important bit is what we, we'd expect the coordinating committee to do on behalf of the, of the scrutiny uh, function of this. Uh, I think quite clearly in terms of the priorities that are being set out, as I said, the pledges are there uh, for everybody to see. Uh, as far as that, quite clearly you can see from, from this particular slide, and as we go through them, we're not uh, being specific about what we're seeing at this, uh, this time. This is the plan. What you'll see in over the coming weeks and months is the development of the delivery plan, which will be specific about how we will be in a position to measure that we've been successful in year one to year five around these particular pledges whether that be reducing child family and poverty, whether that be young people ready for work and adult, whether that be serious response to domestic violence. Similarly, in terms of where, where our, our employers want to invest, in terms of our growth, it's clearly important, as I said earlier, that people do want to be self-sufficient and as independent as possible. As, possible. Uh, as part of that, that's about growing jobs, it's about promoting new sectors of, 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 uh, of the economy, uh, making sure that we do build on our, our specific uh, and very well uh, run uh, manufacturing maritime and renewable energy sectors uh, and using those as unique selling points for the As part of that, you can see we need to be working closely with business, working closely with business to create uh, greater job opportunities in, in Wirral with a target figure of creating 5,000 new jobs over five years. We want to buy the tourism economy to bring people in, to bring income to the other, to the to, uh, to Wirral. But also we want to support and thrive with small businesses so we can see that we, we mean what we set out to do in terms of, in terms of key factors. It's also important in terms of our environmental services. People do want a good uh, quality of health. We know the health inequalities that we have, and particularly for, for uh, various parts of our borough. It does remain paramount importance for us as a council. Uh, we want all our residents to have a good quality of life. Through that, we'll have leisure and culture opportunities for all. We'll ensure that our community services are joined up and accessible, but also we will lose our opportunities to have an attractive local environment and ensure that 